Hey class, Professor Luke again, and welcome to Lecture B of Week 4. As promised, I'm back, and I'm going to talk about a little bit more of what we cover in Chapter 8, which is more about the actual initial uh, design phase. So, if you haven't known by now, I'm a Dilbert fan, so I uh, thought I'd start with the cartoon here. Uh, so, I'll just, in case you can't see it, I'll go ahead and read it. Uh, box 1, the pointy-haired boss says, You haven't heard what the problem is yet. How can you recommend building a database to solve it? Box B, uh, Wally says, We always build a database, and Dilbert thinks, and we'll need coffee mugs for the project team. And the pointy-haired boss in box 3 says, The problem is that we have poor processes. And then Wally says, That could be the slogan on our mugs. Now, Humorous a little bit, but it's actually unfortunately true in a lot of uh, IT shops where you're working on systems and systems development. Um, there's a couple of implications here. Now, number one, evaluating your processes to make sure they're effective. Uh, another one that I thought of is um, thinking outside of the box. The same solution doesn't work for every problem. So let's go into design a little bit. Okay, so what is the goal of a systems design? So basically, what, what are we trying to build? We want something that's effective and reliable and easy or at least uh, doable to maintain. Um, so what are some things you think about? You know, as IT professionals, as programmers, web developers, whatever, we kind of think maybe on a higher level. But think like a user, you know, somebody that perhaps is just doing data entry or uh, a customer service rep that's on the phone and using the software to find information. You know, put yourself in those those, those shoes to be able to uh, look at how, when you especially when you're developing the interface design, which is most of what we'll talk about. Um, look at look at it from their eyes. Also, make sure you anticipate future needs. Is the system need, going to need to grow? Um, are we going to need to add additional fields? You know, so if you make a really l large input fields and then you need to add additional information later then it'll be a complete UI redesign and of course I'm in mean, part of that anticipate future needs is also provide flexibility um, so it is able to be modified at a later date so physical design we look at interface design data design the systems architecture, basically what, what our, our deliverable is, and that's from my project management world, is uh, a deliverable for physical design is going to be a systems design specification. So first let's look at the data. You know, a system's not, what, what's the old adage, garbage in, garbage out. So basically a system is only as good as the input and the output. And what's input is the data. So um, when we're looking at managing data, uh, a couple things to think about. The system should enter and verify data as soon as possible. Um, also, it should be a specific type of data. So if you're coding an input form uh, that is a social security number, uh, you want to have checks and balances in place to make sure that they don't type ABC123456 or something like that. You know what I mean? Uh, and it all needs to be numeric, obviously and uh, basically collect input as close to its source as possible. What does that mean? Um, essentially, basically, uh, when you're inputting the data, make sure that um, it has a clear path. It doesn't need to go through several processes to be uh, put in the database. So let's think about the user interface next. Um, IBM says that a good user interface user interface is one that you do not notice. What does that mean? I think we've all used computer systems where you have to stop, stop the process of the work you're doing to say, now where do I click? What do I do next? That is a non-productive user interface. You want something that's very intuitive. Um, this whole study, there's actually master's degrees you can get in HCI or human computer interaction, which studies how people react and act, interact with computers. Um, and of course, uh, since 
pre pre Windows. Um, we've had always used GUIs or graphical user interfaces. So Windows is a user interface where DOS, where they used to they typed commands, was a non uh, GUI. So you want to make make sure that is uh, friendly design and it's easy to learn and use. So here's some success tips. You want to understand the business. You want to understand if it's a mortgage business. You want to understand what types of information the users need, um, what kind of forms they'll be working with, that type of thing. Um, and so, for example, if you have an online form of their inputting policy information for an insurance company, you want it to logically follow, you know, at least in a journal matter, uh, the forms on the, if they have a form they're data entering from a paper form. Um, you also want to make sure to maximize the graphical piece to make it, again, this goes back to the whole uh, thinking like a user and make it very interactive. Um, you want to focus and create models and prototypes towards the end of this process to get feedback um, and have potential users you know, give you feedback on not only the effectiveness of your design but also how user friendly it is. And then, of course, um, as we know, when we're uh, developing anything, document, document, document. Whether you're in a regulated industry or government industry or private business, um, the key is to document everything. And when I've uh, worked with systems teams, the key is to start early and uh, make sure that you're effectively documenting. Like, for example, when we're, uh, I work on an agile project team right now. So uh, when we're developing the first set of features, I'm concurrently working with uh, our technical writers to make sure that we have good user documentation as soon as we have wireframes and mockups uh, for for what the site's going to look like, that we can start designing the documentation so users are able to uh, have a complete appendices or a document for their use of the system. So here's your rules. Create an interface that's easy to learn and use. Enhance user productivity. So that goes back to the uh, where do I go next question. Provide users with help and feedback. So like here's a, a good example of rule number three is if you've uh, on Office 13, 2013, Microsoft Office 2013, again, this is my opinion, um, it's harder than heck to find the help feature. So it used to be there's a question mark you, or in a circle, and you click on that and the help comes up. But it's a lot harder to find nowadays. Make sure the layout's attractive um, and easy to read. Make sure that the, uh, to enhance the interface, make it the best it can be. Focus on your data entry screens. Like I said, uh, some of the most challenging pieces of a system is how d data gets into the system. So if you have a user jumping all over the screen or maybe when you're tabbing through a form, if it doesn't follow a logical progression, uh, say it goes to first name, then address, then back to last name or something like that, that wouldn't be... Uh, great. Use val validation rules again so if it's a social security number field make sure they can't type letters and um, whenever possible either through a database or a lookup table in a database or something of that nature reduce input volume. So for example if there's a type of policy you know if if you can make it a code so like A123 brings up in the uh, display field that this is a personal lines policy for example, um, instead of having the user type, this is a personal lines policy. So whatever you can do to make it more basically uh, easier on the user. So when we're looking at that, um, when we're laying out the form or the report, make sure it's logical and intuitive. Um, it should be easy to read and well organized. Now. Um, Think of it like Access, if you've ever developed a report in Access. There's a lot of programs have wizards nowadays that'll do a lot of the form design for you uh, with experts that have uh, really studied, you know, logical user, uh, form design. And the other thing to think about is, um, especially with reports, that it's not always going to be a printed thing on a piece of paper. It might be emailed, it might be blogged, IM, wireless, or 
personal devices. It could be a video, uh, podcast, or multitude of other things. So make sure that the, whatever report that uh, you're creating is friendly with other types of display instead of just print. And we kind of touched on this, but think of think of input. Think of data entry. So is this batch data entry where you have a data entry operator, you know, typing sets of forms over and over and over all day long, or uh, is it an online thing where people enter their own information? Think of that when you're developing a user interface. And there's other things besides just a keyboard. Think of these are all input devices uh, besides the keyboard. Uh, point of sales machines, ATMs, credit card machines, barcode readers. Uh, QR code readers, you know, the, I'll give you a second there, but think about it. There's so many different ways that a computer gets data. Uh, another one I just thought of is FTP or file transfer protocol. Okay, so we have input, we have output, but as you know, that in over the last oh, seven years, there's been a lot of data breaches with major companies. So security and data integrity are critical. So make sure that uh, the information going out is secure, the information going in is secure, make sure it's accurate, make sure you have a way to audit it, and make sure that it's uh, secure. So what's next? Uh, let's end up with this. Basically, after you have the forms designed or the interface design, you'll start with modular design. This is creating individual components or modules. Um, to basically, which will roll up into a bigger process. Um, use a structured design to for each module. So, uh, for example, as shown on the DFD or documented in the process description. Another option is to prototype. Uh, simply, you have system prototypes where you produce a full-featured working model of the IS. So, think of that as a beta, a beta, 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 and then alpha, and then uh, general release. And then design prototypes. This can be uh, system, or it could be drawings, or whatever. Um, but we're basically, a way to verify the user requirements to make sure that uh, it's what you're trying to develop and implement is effective. Okay, that's the end of chapter eight or lecture B of the week. I'm sorry this went a little long, but uh, let's have a good week. And if you have any questions, uh, you know how to get in touch.